right, welcome YouTube. I am your host, Brad Claybaugh, and this is Brad's Board and Busters, your textile art channel. This is the channel where we have fun with fabric. All right, Busters, hey, let's get on with today's project. Hey, we're gonna do something really kind of fun and different today. It'll be a tie-dye shirt, but it's gonna be a little different than our normal tie-dye shirts. And the theme of it is, and if you can't tell from my pumpkin orange Hawaiian shirt, that I'm going to do a Halloween jack-o'-lantern tie-dye shirt. But it's going to be a little different also. Yes, we will tie up a pumpkin pattern and dye it as normal. But then I am going to make stencils and we are going to airbrush some details over the shirt and create the jack-o'-lantern that way. And so to do that, Yes, you need an airbrush. Now, I got this combo kit right here from Harbor Freight. And I'll leave a link for it in the description below. Now this combo kit sells, at least the last time that I looked, at the time of the recording of this video, for $109.99. And it comes with the air compressor, and the airbrush and a hose and so it really has everything you need to get started and it's a pretty decent little kit so the air compressor is just like you saw in the box and then this is the airbrush that it comes with I'll try and keep a glare off of it yeah it's a pretty nice airbrush it uh, is gravity fed it has a rather fine needle, but it's uh, adequate for, you know, airbrushing our liquid dyes that we use for tie dye. And I think I'm even going to try to use it for doing some bleach painting as well in the future. So anyway, you'd need that. And then the other thing you'll need is some stiff cardboard. I'm using, this is a, a cardboard tray that I got I believe from the nursery in the spring when I bought some plants and it's it's sturdy enough and I'm going to cut my stencils out of this and then I'll show you how to use that when we get to that part of the project and so the other thing you're obviously going to need is a all cotton white t-shirt and you're going to need to pre-wash that and then after you wash it and dry it, then you can soak it in soda ash water for 20 minutes or a little more. And then that'll go in the washer and spin out so it's slightly damp. And then it'll be ready to fold up the pattern. And we'll do that over here at my work table here shortly. And so when I go to dye this shirt, I'll tell you the colors that we're going to use at that time so you can duplicate the project. And then, Couple other things you're gonna need for this project. You'll need a washable marker to mark off the shirt. And then a string to help actually create a, a radius. I'll show you that when we get over to the table. And I think that's about it. All right, let's get over to the work table and I'll show you how to fold this up, how to draw out the pumpkin pattern, and then we'll get on with it. All right, we'll see you at the table. All right, Busters, here we are. So I've got my shirt, like I say, it's all prepped. This is a medium size. And so what we want to do with it now is turn it inside out. And this pattern we don't want on the back. So we're just going to center the front and then fold that in half and face the front toward you. All right, the way I like to center my front, uh, to do the collar, I bring the shoulder seams and sleeve seams together, straighten out the neck, lay that out, and then just mark that right there. There's that center. And then grab underneath the uh, sleeves shake that out 
and that helps straighten out the shirt so you can find a good center at the bottom. Well, this is why you got to really be careful because you never know with these manufacturers how they're going to make their product. Look how this and that are so far away from each other. Anyway, so now we got that flat, bring those corners together. And then you've got that. And so that's your center there. So now grab that bottom center and the top collar center. Bring those together. And just fold it right there. Come on, you can do it. There you go. All right. And then just to kind of even out the bulk, grab the other sleeve and pull it through. That way things lay a little flatter. Okay. And so get the bottom seam of the sleeve on both of them. Put those together. Even that out. That makes that lay flatter, a little easier to work on. Okay, so there we are, smoothed out, centered. Alright, so for our pumpkin pattern, we want to determine where you want this as far as center and how big, and that's all up to you. At the top, we are going to have a stem on the pumpkin. So, I would say I'm going to come down four fingers to there. The top of my stem is going to be yeah, about two and a half fingers high. Yeah, that should be fine. Like I say, this is just a, a basic reference. Um, we are going to kind of... The pumpkin, th these are reference mark. I can talk. These are reference marks. The first step is laying out a half circle, but then we're going to freeform the pumpkin shape. It won't be perfectly round because pumpkins aren't perfectly round. Okay, so now you just determine kind of how big you want this pumpkin. I don't want it too much. I mean, you got to realize this is about the center of the side of your shirt, you know, on, on your, on the, on your torso. That would be where the side is. So you don't want to extend beyond that. So I would say a good size is probably Okay, there's your half circle. So now, next step is to refine this as more of a pumpkin shape. So pumpkins usually kind of dip in here at the top. So come down a little bit more. And then up. And then you can kind of elongate it out a little further. And then you want to come back around. And then you're going to dip in a little bit for a flatter bottom. There. Something like that. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so that would be our pumpkin shape. And now our stem. We want, like I say, 
Don't want it quite that tall. So we want to come across here. And then down. There we go. All right, so that's our basic pumpkin shape. So, oh, one other thing I didn't mention um, earlier about materials, I forgot. Um, we, we need, uh, we're going to tie this up with sinew and then we'll have more to scrunch up. So you'll need your rubber bands for that as well. So I'm going to grab both my sinew and my rubber bands right now. All right. Nice to be prepared, right? Yeah, well, almost. Okay, so now we'll tie this up. We'll come around here first and then hit that with the sinew, then tie off this part and tie that down with sinew. All right, and just pleat it up as you normally would. Keep your lines straight as you can. All right, forgot one thing before we get this all tied up. Kind of an important thing too. All right, the thing I forgot is to measure. All right, that's 12 to there. Okay, about 13 inches. All right, I, need to, I needed to know this height first before I folded it up so I can cut my cardboard template to fit the details in after this is dyed. So I will write down my 13 inches and then after I get this folded up, I'll show you what that number is going to help us do. Okay, back to folding. Um, and if you notice, I did two colors here. Uh, it's helpful so you because you're drawing a different shape that you're folding to, you're not folding to your perfect crescent shape. Um, also, I did it kind of for the camera so you could see what I was doing different, but it also helps keep your mind focused on the right line. So you might want to do this yourself with two different colors. Okay, let's go get back to folding. All right, so there's the body of the pumpkin. Now let's tie off the stem. Okay, now this can be scrunched. Okay, there's the pumpkin body. Uh, now the rest of it, actually, I may just tie up something up the back just because there's nothing going on there right now. So why not make something? So 
Sometimes that's just kind of how I do this. I just, hey, I feel like putting something here or something there. I got an idea. So let's roll with that idea. Now I say, we didn't have anything planned for the back, but why not put something on it? Nothing fancy. Nothing that nobody else, you know, could manage to do. Just pleat it up the back. Just follow the fold here and keep that straight. All right, something I just made up on the fly. Who knows what it's gonna look like. But who cares, it's on the back. When you're wearing it, you'll never see it. <laughs> okay, so pumpkins tied up. Our mystery stripe in the back is tied up. So now we can scrunch up the rest of it. Okay, that's our jack-o'-lantern tie-dye shirt all tied up. So we've got our pumpkin with the stem, our mystery back, and then the body of the shirt. Before we go out to dye it, let's set that aside. Because now we need to make the templates for the jack-o'-lantern once that's died we want to have the templates ready so we can do that now before we start dyeing it up out in the garage so i measured earlier uh the height of my jack lantern i told you to do that for yours mine was 13 inches from the base 
to where the stem starts. This actually happens to measure exactly 13. Uh, so I'm going to make my, you need to make three, three, I can do three, three <laughs> uh, rib shapes for your jack-o-lantern. And so they're going to be different radiuses. So you do a shallow, a little bit wider, and then a little bit wider. And uh, so this box is just right for that. But then I also need material for the face. And so I actually just recently bought a new pair of shoes. So I've got this cardboard box. And you don't have to use cardboard. If you have some uh, stiff plastic sheeting that would be good for a template, that's fine as well. Um, I have some of that as well, but I figured uh, this is going to get thrown out and recycled, so I might as well use it up as well. So I'm going to use this box. I'll pull it apart and I can make my face pieces out of this and then the ribs out of the other box. So let me get my cutting mat and we'll get on with that. Okay, let's get on with the ribs first. Let's flatten out the box, make that easier to work with. First radius will be this. Will, I'll do the shallow one first. That'll go toward the center of the jack o' lantern. I'm going to see if I have a fresh blade. This is ridiculous. Fresh blade, this ought to make life a whole lot simpler. Okay, so there's the three ribs of our jack-o-lantern. And they may have to be trimmed and adjusted to fit after I have the shirt finished being dyed. And that way I can check it. Okay, the rest of that will go out in recycling. Now for our face. Thing. I think we can manage it out of the top of the box. So we just need to make pieces. So I need to make an eye and a nose and the eye, I just need one because uh, I can flip it over and use it for the left and the right both. So let's just draw out some sort of scary looking eye.
My nose stencil. Okay, so there's all our stencils. After its shirts all died, then we can use that. So now we can get out in the garage and dye up our shirt. I'll see you out in the garage. All right, busters, here we are out at my laundry sink and ready to dye up our jack o' lantern t shirt. All right, let me run through the colors real quick. I've got Lime Pop, I'm going to use that for the stem. And then for the jack-o'-lantern body, I'm going to use Bright Yellow and Deep Yellow. And then for this little detail here, I think we're going to use probably some of the Bright Yellow, Deep Yellow, some Chinese Red. We'll probably add some Black and Lavender. And then in the body here, I believe I'll probably use the Chinese red and lavender and maybe overcoat it with the black. All right. Enjoy the music and you can watch me die.
All right, Busters, I had a little change of heart, change of mind on how I wanted to treat the uh, body of this shirt, so I uh, kind of rimmed both ends with black, then did the line pop, the deep yellow, then black again, Chinese red, and lavender. But I think I still am going to do a quick overwash of the black. Busters, that's the end of that. Let's get this in the tub. It was just a little juicy, so I wanted to get it on the rack. So if it wanted to drip, it could do it in the rack or do it on the rack. All right, so yes, that'll go in my curing tub for at least 24 hours. After that time, I'll bring it back here to the laundry sink to do a rinse out. We'll start with cold water to help get all the uh, soda ash out and then we'll tur gradually turn it to hot to, to rinse out all the loose dye that hasn't bonded to the fabric yet. And then after that, when it, the water's running almost clear, then that'll go into the laundry on a hot cycle to a cold rinse cycle and I'll be using regular detergent and then also adding Curalon, which is a industrial fabric detergent that you can get at Dharma. So then after the shirt is all washed and dried, we'll bring it back to the work table. I'll show you what we've got so far. And then at that time, I'll show you how to apply the stencils to create the jack-o'-lantern. All right, gang, we'll see you at the work table when the shirt's ready. All right, buddies, so here's our jack-o'-lantern so far. The background came out really nice. The pumpkin came out just right. But there's a few things I want to do is look at the templates that I made. See how they fit. If they need any adjusting. That one's not bad. This one I might curve a little more. Uh, yeah, I think that's better. Hey, hey, squirt. God, cat, get out of here. What are you doing? All right, Buster just had a slight cat catastrophe, so <laughs> she's all put away. All right, let's keep going. Um, this one. I think can have a more of a radius as well. Like I say, we just estimated when we made these and I'm sure you'll probably have to adjust yours as well. And that's not a big deal. All right, let's take a look at that. Sure, that's fine. Okay, so those are good. Let's take a look at our face pieces. Is there anything different we want to do with these guys? I think I want to bring the corners of the mouth up a little higher. All right, I like that better. That looks good. And now the nose I'm happy with in relationship to the mouth. But I was looking at the eyes. Seeing the eyes could be a little larger. Oh, actually, goes that way. Yeah, I think I'm going to trim those out a little bigger. Yeah, I think that's better. Okay. So now we have our templates made. Now we can start airbrushing. I, like I said, I haven't used this airbrush before today. I bought it a while ago. And it's it's not the best airbrush. It's it's adequate, 
but you have to kind of play with it. I had to adjust it. I also had to thin down my black dye just a little bit. Um, but before we can apply the dye, we need to hit the, basically our canvas, <laughs> hit the shirt with uh, some soda ash water. And so I'm going to do that. I'll kind of get it, fair, you know, damp and let it sit for you know, our requisite 20 minutes, and then we can start applying the dye using our stencils. Okay, we'll let that sit, and I'll get back with you as soon as it's ready. All right, so I've got this, it's been sitting and soaking. So it should be ready enough to spray. Uh, like I say, this is kind of my first time using this airbrush. It works pretty good. Um, I don't want to thin the dye out too much. And if you hear something in the background, that's the little compressor that it comes with. So we'll give this a good shot, but I think this should work out okay. Um, bear with me and hey, I'll fast forward through it and enjoy the show. Oh, and you might be wondering why we're doing it up here on my easel. You're going to want to prop this up like this because with the gravity cup here in this airbrush, if you're doing it down too much, you, there's a chance you could drip onto your project. This way it's a little safer. You're not going to drip on it so easily. Now, very important, seeing we have to flip this eye over to wipe off all this wet dye so you don't smear it on your jack o' lantern where you don't want it. Let's clean that up. That's pretty far out. That's our jack-o-lantern right there. So that just needs to sit, you know, give the dye time to penetrate, you know, at least 12 hours for this, if not a little bit more. And then we will wash it out again and I will do a reveal. I think I want to do a little more detail. 
Let's see what else we got. Yeah, we got plenty of dye. All right, so like I say, this will sit and then I'll wash it out and we'll do a reveal. See how it looks after we wash this all off. Some of this fuzz will probably wash out. It'll get a little more defined as far as the, you know, outlines. Hey, all right, we'll see you at the reveal. All right, Buster, so here's my jack-o'-lantern after it's been washed and dried. And it came out really good. My biggest concern was, you know, because I did spray soda ash on the shirt, but then airbrushing on the ribs and the face, was that enough to help it bind to the shirt or was it going to all wash off? Well, it stayed, it didn't wash off. I do have, for some reason, this little bit of black. I don't know where that came from and why it's there. It's just kind of in the middle there, but beyond that, it came out really good. I'm very happy with it. Um, my daughter wants one of her own. Uh, this isn't her size, so I have to make another one. But yeah, it's a winner. And so, hey, if you ever have the opportunity, like I said, that uh, airbrush compressor combo, $109 from Harbor Freight. If you want to try to experiment with something like that, you know, it's a, it's a bargain. The compressor is very nice. The airbrush isn't the greatest. It doesn't do really fine lines. It's, you almost have to use it wide open or use very thinned out uh, airbrush paints. Um, I didn't want to thin out the dye any more than it was. So it, you couldn't do really fine details. You just had to kind of open up the airbrush wide open. And But I mean, for the, this purpose, it worked fine. I uh, tried to do a little details here at the bottom. That really wasn't necessary. It almost doesn't show up. So, But the whole concept of using the stencils over the dyed shirt, that worked. That's a winner. So anyway, hey, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. Give it a try. You know, if you're really inclined to try something different, this is interesting. It gives you really a different effect. So hey, hope you learned something new. Yeah, I think this one's pretty cool. Give me a comment down below and tell me what to think about it. All right, let's meet over at the desk and we'll sign off. All right, Busters, that project came out really cool. Hey, I hope you learned something new on this project. Hey, if you really like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming projects. And hey, if you really want to help out my channel, go to my Buy Me A Coffee page and buy me a coffee. That really helps me out. Hey, all right. Thanks for watching. Love you all, folks. Peace out, baby, and go bust out some art.